All right, so EA and DICE have released a new trailer for Battlefield 1. I figured I'd go take a look at it, just for kicks, and I discovered it has all sorts of very unusual, interesting guns in it. So, while I already know exactly which guns are going to be in this game, and I'll explain that at the end of the video, I figured before a bunch of people ask me, and before a bunch of other people who are really into games and maybe not so much into weird, obscure guns, before they misidentify all this stuff, let's take a look at what DICE has put into the second trailer for Battlefield 1. All right, this guy in the tank has a Webley revolver, six-shot British, caliber 455. Uh, this was the Mark VI of the Webley. They had a whole bunch of earlier versions. They're very cool guns. It is absolutely no surprise that Webley revolvers are in the game. This was a very standard sidearm for the British military. All right, this other guy inside the tank scene has a C96 quote-unquote broom handle Mauser. Now, they were never called that by the Germans. It's just an American name based on the shape of the grip. Uh, they were in 763 Mauser caliber, uh, later also made in 9mm Parabellum. Again, no surprise, this is in the movie, or in the game, uh, very common German sidearm during the war. All right, now here's our first real oddity to show up. This is a Mexican Mondragon semi-auto rifle. These were designed by Manuel Mondragon, a Mexican engineer. They were manufactured by SIG in Switzerland. Several thousand of them were delivered to the Mexican army, being... Uh, the first standard semi-auto issue uh, infantry rifle adopted by a national military. Uh, there were some problems with them in Mexican service, and the World War I connection here is that a number of them ended up uh, being sent to Germany uh, for trial as use as aviation guns. Now, they didn't really get purchased in large number, but they are an early semi-automatic. Uh, if you'd like to know more on those, I have a very cool, I think, video on the whole history of the Mondragon, so you can check that out. All right, next up, we have another very unusual submachine gun. Uh, this is Italian. This is a Beretta model of 1918. There were a couple different versions of this made. There was a semi-auto only version. There was a full auto only version. There was a select fire version. There were some that had folding bayonets and some that did not. Uh, not a whole lot of information out there on these. Certainly in English, there's probably a little bit more published in Italian. But um, these were actually introduced into the war at really about the same time as the German MP18. And there really is some argument over which one was quote-unquote the first submachine gun used in combat. Uh, anyway, the, the top-mounted magazine on this gun comes because its original design inspiration was the Villa Perosa, which was uh, a very high rate of fire, double barrel, double receiver, very interesting uh, submachine gun designed in 1915. Anyway, I do also want to mention the sights that are portrayed on this gun are not historically appropriate. Um, it appears that, well, they're very similar to something that the British did actually use in small numbers on Lee Enfield rifles. I suspect that DICE has made that an optional upgrade sort of thing and made it available on a wide variety of guns, even though it wasn't actually necessarily used on them in the war. A little bit more common here, this is a Hotchkiss Portative or Benet Merci light machine gun. Uh, these were developed in France. They were adopted by uh, several different armies, including the U.S. military under the nomenclature of the model 1909 Benet Merci. They use a solid feed strip, which you can see cycling through the gun on the top in this screenshot. Um, standard U.S. machine gun going into World War I, although the U.S. military didn't have very many of them and didn't use them all that much. They used uh, basically loaned British and French machine guns instead. Holy crap, here's another really weird one. This is an Italian Che Rigatti. These were developed right around 1900. They were an experimental uh, semi-automatic rifle. They look, uh, when you inspect them, they look very much like a Carcano that has had a gas system bolted onto the side, but they were in fact uh, built new from the ground up guns. I personally have handled a couple of these. I think they're extremely cool. Uh, very, very few of them were made. They almost certainly did not see service in World War I but they are from the correct time period, and hey, that's a, a cool way to have to, to introduce a little bit more of a fun element into the game when you're playing as the Italians. I do have a full video on the Cherigatti, which you can check out here if you're interested in learning more about them. Here's another one that everyone should have known would be in the game. This is a German MP18 submachine gun. Uh, interesting in that it is fed by a horizontal magazine on the side there. It's actually the same trommel or drum magazine used by the artillery Luger. It's a single stack magazine, holds 32 rounds. It is rather finicky and awkward to use, and it was really the downfall of the MP18 submachine gun. 
however, this was probably the first submachine gun ever actually used in combat. Um, I say probably because that Italian uh, 1918 gun was deployed on the front within a couple weeks one way or the other of the first MP18s, and nobody really seems to know exactly which one actually saw service first. However, uh, this became a pretty iconic German weapon uh, at the end of the war, and they kept them for a long time after the war. Now, it's shown with a bayonet here, which I'm pretty sure is not historically accurate. Uh, they did not put bayonets on the MP18s, but it is a video game. All right, this isn't exactly a handheld weapon, but it showed up here in the trailer, so we'll mention it. Uh, this is a German aircraft armed with a pair of LMG-08s. This is a Maxim gun. The L does not stand for light, it stands for Luft, because these are the aircraft versions of the standard MG-08 belt-fed machine gun. You can see the holes in the barrel jackets at the end, rather than haul around the weight of a solid barrel jacket filled with water, because these planes were flying around at a decent speed up in the atmosphere, uh, they got plenty of cooling just from airflow, so they cut a whole bunch of vent holes in the barrel jackets and used them as air-cooled guns when on aircraft. All right, lastly, we have another broom handle Mauser, and this is the same basic gun as we saw at the very beginning of the video. However, two things jumped out at me here. First is that this, this guy in this screenshot has the shoulder stock attached. Again, no surprise that that would be in the game. Uh, this will not be a machine pistol, assuming they stay true to the history, because there were no full auto broom handle Mausers in World War I. The other thing that I happen to notice is that this pistol appears to have an aperture rear sight, which is also not historically correct. Um, to the best of my knowledge, there was never a version of the broom handle Mauser uh, formally manufactured, especially during World War I, or before World War I, that had an aperture sight like that. So I said at the beginning of this video that I know what guns are going to be in Battlefield I. The answer is all of the guns are going to be in Battlefield I. Uh, the whole point of a major company like EA, a major developer like DICE, putting together a game like this is they're going to make it as action-packed and as fun as they possibly can, because that's what will get people to buy it and play it. Not strict historical realism, but a fun experience. Now, it will, we have yet to see, of course, the game isn't out, the game's not coming out for months, but when it does, we'll find out if they have, or to what extent, they have managed to put historical accuracy into a game that is also fun. However, we know already, just from rational consideration, that they are going to get every sort of semi-automatic, repeating fire, rapid fire, everything that they can find that is more intriguing than your typical bolt-action rifle to put in the game, because that's an essential element in making it a fun game for people who are used to modern video games. So, with that in mind, I have no doubt that there's lots of other guns that are going to be coming uh, that they haven't put into trailers. Uh, pretty much, I would expect anything that has any conceivable connection to World War I will be in the game. For example, the French RSC 1917 and 1918 rifles they haven't shown up. Guarantee you they will. They will be there. Uh, I would expect that pretty much every conceivable semi-auto pistol uh, that was used by anybody during the war will be in there. So just judging from what they've already uh, published, like we saw with things like the Che Rigotti uh, in this trailer, uh, the Che Rigotti, they only made a very, like, less than 10, probably? Certainly less than 100. Far less than 100. If those things are showing up in the game, everything else is. So, it's a fun experience for video game players, I have no doubt. Uh, people like seeing the weird guns in there, and and it's there, there's a plausibility, sort of, because it was a gun from that time period. So I've mentioned that I will be doing some review and some footage on the game when it does come out uh, this fall. I'm not really a video gamer sort of guy myself, but I have been known to dabble from time to time and indulge in, in the odd video game. And uh, hey, I, I'm kind of curious to see what is, uh, what, what do we get when the very best in the industry takes on a subject like World War I? I'm sure it'll be fun. Hopefully it'll be fun. Um, and we'll see. Maybe they can add a, a significant element of historical authenticity to it. Who knows? Uh, if nothing else, they'll uh, bring a lot of interest in World War I for a lot of folks out there who don't know anything about it or, frankly, maybe don't even know that it exists, which is a bit of a cringeworthy thought. But those people can then uh, check out other channels around the Internet, places like Forgotten Weapons Here, In Range TV, C and Arsenal, The Great War, and uh, learn about the actual events of history. So... More coming in the fall, and uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.